Welcome to the spoken tutorial on type 1 and type 2 nutrients. This tutorial is about the difference between type 1 and type 2 nutrients. Let us begin. Food gives us energy and nutrients. Nutrients are necessary for the growth and maintenance of our body. Some of these nutrients cannot be produced by our body. Such nutrients are called essential nutrients. There are 40 essential nutrients that we must obtain from food. We cannot get adequate amounts of these nutrients from nutrient-poor foods. Such foods, even in large amounts, can satisfy only the feeling of hunger. However, we can be deficient in one or more of the essential nutrients. This is known as hidden hunger. Essential nutrients are divided into two types. Type 1 nutrients or functional nutrients and type 2 nutrients or growth nutrients. Iron, calcium, iodine and copper are type 1 nutrients. Manganese, fluorine and selenium also belong to the same group. Vitamin B, C, A, D, E and K are type 1 nutrients as well. Sulfur, chlorine and protein or essential amino acids are type 2 nutrients. Sodium, potassium, magnesium, phosphorus and zinc also belong to the same group. Essential fatty acids like omega-3 are type 2 nutrients as well. Let's understand the difference between Type 1 and Type 2 Nutrients Type 1 nutrients are required for specific functions in the tissues. Therefore, they are concentrated in a particular tissue or group of tissues. Let's take calcium and vitamin A as examples. Calcium is required for strong bones. Vitamin A is required for healthy eyes. By contrast, Type 2 nutrients are required for the overall growth of the body. They form part of the structure and function of each and every cell in the body. Therefore, they are present in all body tissues. Let's discuss the response of our body to type 1 and 2 nutrient deficiencies. During a type 1 nutrient deficiency, the body continues to grow normally. Body takes this nutrient from the specific tissues in which it is stored. Let's take calcium as an example. In calcium deficiency, the body uses the calcium stored in the bones. As a result, the concentration of that nutrient in the tissues decreases. Then, the organs dependent on that nutrient are affected. Therefore, the person becomes ill. The sick person then shows a specific sign of deficiency. Let's understand this with the help of four examples. Bone thinning and increased risk of fractures are signs of calcium deficiency. Anemia is a sign of iron deficiency. Night blindness is a sign of vitamin A deficiency. And hypothyroidism is a sign of iodine deficiency. On the other hand, there is only one sign of type 2 nutrient deficiencies. That sign is called growth failure. Growth failure means the body reduces the rate of two major processes. Formation of new cells and replacement of old cells. The body stops growing and making new tissues. This leads to low body weight, short height, and decreased muscle mass. All the cells of the body, including the immune system, are affected. This increases the risk of infections. Eventually, it can cause death. Type 2 nutrients are not stored in the body. In a deficiency, the body may start to break down its tissues or muscles. This releases the type 2 nutrient in which the body is deficient. This nutrient will then be used for other tissues of the body. When tissue breakdown becomes severe, 
the functions of the cells are affected. Also, there is a reduction in the appetite. The tissue breakdown provides the nutrient in which the body is deficient. However, it also releases all the other type 2 nutrients from the tissues. These nutrients are then excreted from the body. So, all type 2 nutrients must be provided in a type 2 nutrient deficiency. Correcting a type 1 nutrient deficiency does not require all type 1 nutrients. It can be treated by giving only the nutrient in which the body is deficient. Next, let's discuss the availability of type 1 and 2 nutrients from breast milk. Breast milk contains stable stores of type 2 nutrients. They do not change even if the mother is undernourished. The baby of an undernourished mother can grow well with adequate breastfeeding. By contrast, the quantity of type 1 nutrients in breast milk is not stable. It varies as per mother's self-nourishment. Let's take vitamin D as an example. Breast milk of a mother deficient in vitamin D has less amount of vitamin D. Next, let's discuss the diagnosis of type 1 and type 2 nutrient deficiencies. A type 1 nutrient deficiency is commonly diagnosed in two ways. First, the unique symptoms of the deficiency are recognized. Then, the level of the nutrient in the body is measured by a blood test. Let's take iron and iodine as examples. In iron deficiency, symptoms such as pale skin and fatigue are recognized. The level of hemoglobin in the body is measured by a blood test. Iodine deficiency is also diagnosed by its unique symptoms and tests. Symptoms such as swelling of the neck, weight gain and hair loss are recognized. The level of iodine and thyroid hormones in the body is measured by blood test. Type 1 nutrient deficiencies are well recognized and treated. There are various ways to correct a type 1 nutrient deficiency. One can take the recommended amount of these nutrients in the diet. Supplements are also recommended for these nutrients. Iron, vitamin C and folic acid supplements are commonly prescribed. Food is fortified with type 1 nutrients in areas where deficiency is common. A well-known example is salt that is fortified with iodine. A qualified nutrition expert can provide guidance on these methods. Diagnosis and treatment of a type 2 nutrient deficiency is difficult. There is only one way to diagnose any type 2 nutrient deficiency. It is to measure and track the weight, height and mid-upper arm circumference. However, this will only help in detecting growth failure. Growth failure is caused by every type 2 nutrient deficiency. It is difficult to determine which specific nutrient the body is deficient in. So, correcting a type 2 nutrient deficiency requires all type 2 nutrients. Food rich in all type 2 nutrients must be given in such a deficiency. Increasing only the quantity of previously given food will not work. Previously given food fail to provide type 2 nutrients to the body. The quality of food must be changed for normal growth of the body. Please consult a qualified nutrition expert for further guidance. Food sources of type 1 and type 2 nutrients are discussed in other tutorials. Please visit our website for more details. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for joining.